Hi, this is Danny Lewis from Music Pro Tutorials. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking a first look at Revolution. It's been out a little while, but this is the first time I've got a hold of it. It's something that I really fancied getting because I wanted to get a really decent collection of classic vintage drum machine samples. And that's what this is, but it's done so basically with an impeccable presentation, as you can see here. Now this runs inside Contact Native Instruments is Sampler. And I've built Contact Instruments before and there are, there's a whole bunch of things you can do to customize them. And I'm gonna just open this up and take a look, see if I can get to take a look behind the scenes at what these guys have done. It looks potentially like the thing is locked up. Yeah, look at this, the edit mode is locked. I'd love to take a look at the scripting that's used to actually put this instrument together because it does look incredible. And the demonstrations that I've seen have really shown that this is almost pushing the limits of what's possible within the contact instrument interface. So I'm gonna take that off. Let's just put it back how it was. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna customize the window to take away the browser. I really wanna focus on just the actual instrument itself. Let's take away the keyboard. Let's take away the info line as well. So we're really focused on this interface and look at that, that just looks incredible. It's very much based on the Roland TR909. You can see that by the coloring, the way that the buttons and the knobs are designed, it's definitely got that flavor to it. There is a section here, which I believe is for the actual drum sounds. There's a programming section down the bottom and I doubt very much whether I'm gonna use that. Um, it's a step sequencer, you know, much like the uh, the classic machines, but maybe I should try it. I don't know. I mean, really, I've got no agenda at the moment. This is just me discovering the plugin within the framework of Reason 9.5, because of course now we've got these VST instruments available inside. And, uh, you know, it's a fantastic new addition for a reason um, to be able to do that. Opens up tons of possibilities, of course. So let me just take a look. I mean, what I have also is I've got my Ableton Push controller hooked up with Pusher, all right? So this is a, a piece of software that allows you to trigger and program Reason using the Push, and it works incredibly well. So just to let you know. Um, just triggering sounds here off of the Push. I haven't got the external camera set up at the moment, so apologies, you just have to take my word for it. I've got it currently set to accent mode, which means that it's gonna be maximum velocity. I wanna do that so I don't have to bash the pads hard for you to be able to get to hear the sounds. So um, what do we got? Let's take a look. Um, okay, so there's no presets up at this level, at the multi-level, but we do have down here on the instrument level. So drum machines, analog kits. This is a selection that we've got. Looks like some mixed up kits, hybrid kits. Let me just dive straight into the 909, let me find it. Okay, so we have different versions. 909 analog, mastered 12, SP1200. Let's just take a look at this uh, analog one. So I'm assuming this is um, the load indicator. It is, yeah, it's showing me the sample is being loaded. Okay, just trying out the pads at the moment. Oh, it looks as if the uh, step sequencer is running. Maybe I've triggered something. Um, so I'm assuming it's almost like above a certain note, it starts triggering patterns. That's what it looks like, but there's no programming here. Now, if I select this kick. Ha, okay, something is uh, definitely happening there. Not quite, quite what I expected, to be honest. Um, let me take that programmer off and turn these. All uh, right, okay, so. There is one kick. So if I go one, five, nine, 13, I would expect a four to the floor, but I also feel perhaps this is running for two bars. Let's have a listen. Yeah, there we go. Let me just roll with the step sequencing. I didn't expect that I'd be doing that. Oh, look, there's an AB switcher. Let me just try for a second. I wanna see whether I can just fix that on A. And like I said, this is a discovery session. Um, I'm really just getting a feel for this. What's this loop? Ah, 
Okay, there's no point me trying to waste your time and my time trying to work out how to switch that just to one single pattern. So I'm just gonna roll with this as it is. So that's the kick. That's the only sound I've got playing at the moment. Let me just take a look at what we've got in terms of the options here. Okay, so this is, these are very regular kind of 909 style controls for adjusting this, the actual tuning and also the decay, so the length of the sound. A bit more of a punchy attack on there. Ah, okay, so these are going through different modes of processing. Really like that tape vibe, that's sounding pretty wicked. Ha, do you know what? Back in the day, I used to take my 909 kicks and run them through the desk, um, a hardware desk, with a gain control at maximum. The actual fader itself had to come down really low, but it kind of added this kind of texture to it. I know they're calling it tape, but uh, you know, running it through a desk really hot used to do that. That sounds wicked, it sounds really good. I might be inclined to keep it on that. So let's just take a look, what's going on here? Um, let's get that clap. Okay, so that's this is perk two up here. I can't see any other programming on here, so I'm assuming, let me just flick this switch onto A, and let's go here for the five and the 13. Let's play. Okay, so what happened there is, I think when you click on an existing hit, it adds an accent. So when it goes red, that means it's the louder velocity. This is interesting. Let me just go here and switch these because that sounded a bit uneven. Let me listen now. And in fact, that kick drum, let me come over. So if I switch, is it this one? There we go. See, I'm slowly getting the hang of this. Let me take off that accented kick there. Okay, so my first thought now is, is there a MIDI export on this? Because if I'm going to start building up a arrangement, then you would expect to want to do so. Um, what have we got here? Library. Save, I wonder. I wonder what we could do here. But like I said, this is a discovery session for me, so I don't want to get too bogged down with this. But look, I've just stumbled across another interesting view here. This is good. Okay. So that means, oh, and also this is great. I can audition the sounds by clicking on the grid. So maybe I'll just focus on this view. If there are any experts out there, please tell me if I can export this to MIDI. That would be very interesting. But like I said, let's just discover more about this. So, okay, let me just, ah, oh, okay. So vertical is a velocity. So I'm painting. I just clicked on something by mistake. And again, this is gonna take some getting used to. Can I just double click? Can I right click? Just trying to work out different ways of working with the interface. Okay, so let's just be careful. I'm gonna do a very standard 909 house beat. Let's have a listen. I guess my first question is, is um, are these sounds set up with choke groups, because what I'd like to do is to put a closed hat here, and then also here. So think about this, this is an open hat, okay? When these two, if they are in a choke group, um, play at the same time, there's only one that can play. So whichever one was playing first is cut off. So that means the open hat is allowed to play longer here, but then because of this one, it gets cut short, and that creates a really interesting vibe. So I'm gonna see if they do have choke groups. Sounds like it, it really does. Now, I'm also wondering, is there some swing? There is. I wonder if this is like 909 style swing. We shall see what it sounds like. That's quite nice. Let me go heavier. Yeah, wicked, that sounds good. So you see what I'm doing?
just experimenting. Okay, that's working nicely. What else do we have? Okay, some unexpected things going on there. Now, it seems that whilst that was running, I think that's what this record mode is for. When I trigger samples, they get recorded into the grid. So that's something to learn. I didn't mean for that to happen, but that's good to know. Okay, let me paint these in. Take this off. Okay, that's good, but I want to get some control of the drums now. I'm going to click on here, see whether it takes me back. It does. Okay, let me get into that ride. Bring the volume down. And also the other thing I want to do is focus on that. And let's change the character. Oh, look, we've got the tape. Bring the volume down. Okay, let me try that tape two on here. A lot more volume. But I like the character that's coming out here. And maybe minor clap. Let's do the same. I wonder if there's a way to globally set tape two to everything. Let's see how things are sounding now. So there is a reverb here. So this must be like a send effect. That um, ride I'm going to bring down. Going to pan that to the left. Yeah, there's the delay. I wonder if that is a center return or whether that's an insert. Because I quite like the sound of that, but I wouldn't want to use it as an insert, to be honest. Maybe I can get away with that. There's something quite nice about it. Now, bear in mind at the moment, I'm recording the screen and everything at the same time. I've got a funny feeling my buffer is a little bit too low for that. Because I'm hearing some audio glitches every now and again. So I'm going to change this to 256. Okay, it's sounding wicked, but what I want to do is I want to see how it's going to sound with some other sounds. So part of me is thinking, right, I need to save this as it is because there is something really nice about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save as and I'm going to call this Revolution Demo 1. Now, my assumption is that the settings for contact and revolution are going to be saved with the actual song. I hope so. I'll test that if I can remember fairly soon. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to a different kit. Okay. So let's take it. Ah, oh, now, you know, what I was saying about applying the tape two effect across the whole set of sounds. Maybe that's what this is over here. So let's take a listen. And of course I've lost my programming. <laughs> um, maybe there is a way to save the kit. I think there is. So let me test my, theory from before. So we're going to do open. And um, where do I store this? Um, just trying to remember. Is it on my recent list? There we go. So let's take a look. It may take some time for this to load. Um, oh, the other thing is I need to close it without saving. So don't save. Come back up. 
that's a website for the um, the plugin, by the way. So this is going to load it up, and let's see whether it's saved my settings, so my programming and uh, all of the settings of the sounds, because I thought they were sounding really nice there. I think that's one of the big selling points about this library. It's supposed to be very authentic sounding, and the processing options really do give you that very authentic sound. This is really feeling like a, a fantastic, um, you know, digital version of the 909. So bear with me whilst we wait for this to open up. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, yeah, I was feeling a bit optimistic about that. I actually really like the sound of this. Um, so what's my, my best step here? What should I do? Um, library. I want to save this into my own kind of user library. Now, is there a way to do this? I'm just trying to take a look at the interface. Oh, here we go. So save. So save. And I'm going to say here, Danny Revolution 1. Where does that go? Is it in this list? Maybe it's, I need to point to the specific folder. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, okay, it looks that way. So anyway, what we'll do is attempt again, loading that 909 kit with the tape two. So we're loading the samples. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up my programming. So we're going to go load. Yep, it appears to be here. Let's see how that sounds. Now, that sounds it sounds pretty raw now. Um, the levels are different because I've you know the what the levels that were there set on the original drum machine, and it's lost my reverb. It's lost um, my panning. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert back once again. I'm going to spare you the, the details of waiting for it to load, etc. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so the thing at the moment is I feel a little bit bound to this pattern, right? I'm feeling I really like it. So um, I don't want to change anything there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up another instance of contact and I'm going to load up Revolution again. All right, so... This is gonna be another case of having to wait for this to load. Okay, so uh, I am gonna do a fast forward, but you know, like I said, this is a discovery video. I'm kind of making stuff up as I go along here, um, just evaluating. There is an LE version as well, which I'm assuming is cut down, so less um, samples in there, but I'm gonna go for the full on version. The reason, because I wanna take a step and start exploring the possibilities of switching sounds around and, and making my own decisions about the sounds that will go in a kit. So I'm going to try and make a complementary ribbon that's going to sit on top of that 909 one that I've got really attached to. I think that's a danger. You know, sometimes when you program something and put something down, if you like the texture, texture, you don't want to change it, and I don't. So this now will be another instance of the Revolution drums in contact running as another instrument alongside the original in reason. So here's the new instance. I just need to come back to the original and open this up and turn this button on. I've just worked out that this is the sequencer one. So if I put the info line on, this is sync sequencer host synchronization. So when I do the transport in reason, it's going to trigger this. All right, that's really important. So goodbye to this and opening this one, the new one. Once again, let me take off the browser. And let me pick something different this time in terms of kits. Let me see what we got. Let's audition some of these. Um, 606 with the SP1200 sound. Let's have a listen. Triggering off of the push. Loving that grainy lo-fi sampling texture of the SP1200. But I'm going to just check out some more. And actually, I'm assuming that I can use the right arrow here to switch to the next kit in the list. Yep, there we go. Some real nice texture there, actually.
Okay, so what I might do is program something in here. So really liking the sound of that hi-hat to complement the other one. Possibly a little bit loud at the moment. But let's bring through some programming and let's get this going. Let's get a couple of hits here. Okay, let's put that swing up. And let's go for A. Now, I'm just trying to think about what I want to do here. Let me just take a look at that sequencer again, because I'm not feeling the grid programming. I actually preferred what I was playing in. So why don't I try that thing where this is recording and I'm triggering from here. So that worked, but it wasn't very well performed in. Let's give that a go again. The other thing I want to do whilst I'm here is see whether the MIDI I trigger gets recorded into here. I've got a feeling it won't do because it feels to me that this step sequence is bound to the actual triggering of the, the buttons here. But let's see. No. There it is. It's in there. So what this makes me feel I want to do, I'm sorry if I'm boring you is I'm literally going to play it into this sequencer. Now this is really interesting. I didn't realize it was going to do this. So let me just uh, vibe with this a sec. Here we go. Okay, wicked. So I'm just going to make some adjustments to some velocities here. Okay, that's working. But now I'm starting to feel maybe I don't really like that drum sound. So this 606. Now I'm going to assume that I can change that with the arrows here. That's great. So let me audition some of these. Something about that I really like. Let me have a listen to that. Oh, of course, if I solo here, it's not muting the other instance. I'm going to mute here. Yeah, I really like that. It's got a real kind of crunchy, high frequency sound to it. So let's take a look. Is there anything else that I could use to complement what's in there? Let me take a look at some percussion stuff. So I'm flicking on here. You can see that this area here changes. I want to load up something different. Let me um, try and find that sound. Okay, now, interestingly, that sounds spot on actually. I'm going to see if I can find it on the keyboard. There it is. The classic Roland 707 rim shot. That sounds great. Maybe a bit of reverb. Okay. Well, I forgot I had my record on. Now, did I want that? <laughs> this is such a learning experience. Let me take that off. Yeah, I'm not feeling that. Let me take these off of here. 
Look at that, the way the step sequence interacts with that. This is great. Um, let me take the record off for a moment. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Just checking out some of the other sounds here. Let's go back to the drums. Okay, 606 snare, let's keep going. Okay, I like that, what's this? Okay, pitch. See how that fits in. Okay, wicked. So you can see there that I've got two instances of Revolution running. One is with that 909 kit, which is providing the solid backbeat there. And now I've got the other instance here, adding some extra detail. So this whole concept of programming in the actual instrument itself is something it's caught me by surprise. I didn't expect to be doing that. And I've really enjoyed doing that. Um, but you know, like my question is to wave alchemy and also to the community out there who's watching is basically can i export this programming as midi to bring through into reason because i would prefer personally to arrange that midi in the actual song window all right you get me so you, you understand that um so that's my question i don't have time to go delving in at the moment so let me put it out to you guys tell me whether that's feasible this feels like a really great way to lay down drums, that's for sure. I mean, we have so many choices, don't we? Um, the main thing about this is it feels like it's a really solid library of those classic drum sounds. So that's something that I feel comfortable about coming back to. They, these sound right to me, okay? The fact that I've got the flexibility of switching stuff around on the fly, I love that. I think that works really well. The programming has taken me by surprise. I really like that. I'm sure there are lots of other options here. I can see some strip routing, uh, shaper routing. I'm sure there's things that you can do to transform the sounds. If I click on the effects, oh my God, here we go. This is a whole new world. Um, maybe I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> now, is this globally or is this actually on individual sounds? Let me just have a play around a second. I'm gonna come back, in fact, to my original kit and I'm gonna click on effects. I'm curious about the, uh, the compression here. Let's have a listen. Okay, so this is on a sample basis. Let me just confirm that by switching over. Yeah, look, so I compressed the clap. So my question now is, is actually, can I do this over the whole drum kit? Another one out to the community. Let me know whether you know how to do that. Um, well, this thing has so much scope. Um, you know, I, I suppose the thing is you can say, okay, yeah, I could load up my drum samples into a drum machine and do stuff easily. Um, you know, you've got a whole load of choices there, but there's something about the choices that are available in here that feel really focused at the moment. You know, this is my first, uh, you know, my first look at this thing, of course. And I'm just now noticing that there are some controls down here. Seriously, can we adjust the sample start time and then the attack hold to so the envelope here? There is a filter. Um, now, is this once again at the sound level? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, once again, I'd like to see these over the whole drum kit. That could be interesting. So look, there seems to be so much flexibility here. I honestly, I've, nev I've never seen a contact instrument 
that has such a fantastic interface. This doesn't feel as if it's actually part of contact. You know, sometimes you feel instruments, when they're in contact, you're like, no, I know this is contact, but I'm not coming back to the fact that this is sitting inside that contact framework. And I really like that because it makes me just believe this is a, a bespoke instrument that doesn't need that framework. So this is really focusing me on the drum sound. So I've got to say, um, you know, my first impressions, as you've uh, seen me and, and you've witnessed these uh, uh, a really really solid and um, strong I think this is fantastic and so I'm really looking forward to playing around with it so listen if you guys have had it for a while because it has been out for a while let me know what you're thinking um, if you have any tips please let me know I'm really keen to uh, explore more about this and maybe I will do a follow-up video at some point in the future but anyway for the moment that's it thank you Wave Alchemy this is a fantastic um, addition uh, to the, the armory of, of drum programming options that we have these days and uh, yeah I love it